Classifying Real Numbers, Lesson 1.2a. When we classify objects, we arrange them into groups. The set of real numbers contains rational numbers and irrational numbers. The rational numbers can be written as a fraction, and they include natural numbers, those are counting numbers like 1, 2, 3, and so on. And it includes whole numbers, that's counting numbers and the number 0, and integers, those are positive and negative whole numbers. The irrational numbers, they can't be written as a fraction or repeating or terminating decimal. We can classify animals based on shared characteristics. A pug is an animal, a vertebrate, and a dog. So it's an animal, which is a vertebrate, which is a dog. So this is like a subclass of animals. It's a subset of the set of animals. Now, some of you who watch all my videos have seen my fish before. These are the natural numbers, so that would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Whole numbers are the natural numbers, so it's included in the whole numbers, the natural numbers are, but it also includes 0. Then, integers are negative and positive whole numbers, so it includes the whole numbers and the natural numbers and negative numbers. Rational numbers include fractions and decimals, the negative and positive whole numbers, the whole numbers, the natural numbers. So do you see how rational numbers are all of these? Real numbers have irrational numbers included and rational numbers. Real numbers are all of these and irrational numbers like pi or square root of 2. So here I have a rectangular Venn diagram. These are real numbers. Everything in here is a real number. Real numbers are split into rational numbers and irrational numbers. The irrational numbers are not perfect squares. And they can't be written as a fraction or repeating or terminating decimal. So it would include numbers like the square root of 2, pi, because that doesn't have an end, does it? It just keeps going on and on and on. There's so many digits of pi. The square root of 17 and the negative square root of 11. For rational numbers, that includes all the numbers that can be written as a fraction, the integers, the negative and positive whole numbers, the whole numbers that include 0, and natural numbers, the counting numbers. Real numbers include all rational and irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are not perfect squares. So here we have some perfect squares, like the square root of 25 is 5, because 5 times 5, 5 squared, is 25. And 36 here, under our radical sign, is a perfect square, because the square root of 36 is 6. That's 6 times 6, 6 squared. These are rational. See how we get a whole number 5 or a whole number 6? And the irrational numbers would be like the square root of 23, which would be 4.79583152333 squared. See how it's not like 5 squared or 6 squared? Look at the square root of 37. It's 6 and all these decimal places squared. These are not perfect squares. These are. So irrational numbers are not perfect squares. These are irrational numbers. These are rational numbers. We can write all the names that apply to each number. Here we have the square root of 14. And it's not a perfect square, is it? Because we would have to multiply 3.741 and all of these decimal digits squared in order to get the square root of 14. That's not a perfect square. So this is irrational. It's an irrational number, and it's a real number because irrational numbers are part of real numbers. Here we have negative 13 and 29 hundredths. Well, it's not an integer because it's not a whole number. Remember, integers are negative and positive whole numbers. And that decimal point, well, that's not a whole number. It's a negative, but it's not a whole number. So it is a rational number, and it is a real number. Here we've got the quotient of the square root of 49 and 7. That's how you would read that. 
because fractions are like little division problems, we would read this as the quotient of the square root of 49 and 7. We do the numerator. The square root of 49 is 7. That's 7 times 7. And it's over 7. Well, same numerator and denominator. That's equal to 1. So not only is this a natural number, 1, a whole number, 1, and an integer, it's a negative or positive whole number. So these are all rational numbers. These are all rational numbers. So we can just say that this is a rational number and a real number. We don't necessarily have to name these because these all come under the heading of rational numbers. Here we've got negative 1 half. Well, it's not an integer because it's not a whole number. Even though integers are negative and positive, they're negative and positive whole numbers. But it is a rational number because rational numbers can be written as fractions. So it's a rational number and it's a real number. Now this one might make you think for a second before you can figure it out. It says to write all names that apply. And here we have a square whose area is equal to 49. So let's say we can say the area of this is 49 centimeters squared. Okay, that's the area. Well, it's telling us that the length of one side, okay, so the length of one side of this square, what number is that and can we name it? Is it rational? Is it irrational? The length of this one side? So we think a square has four equal side lengths and the given area is 49 centimeters squared, which means each side is seven centimeters. So now we know this is seven centimeters, which means that's seven centimeters and seven times seven is 49. So that is 49 square, ce square centimeters, isn't it? See? So now we've got a seven. We've got 7 is a natural number, it's a whole number, and it's an integer. And these are all rational numbers, aren't they? They're included. So the length of one side of a square with an area of 49 centimeters squared is a rational number and a real number. Again, it's telling us to write all names that apply. And it says, Emma used two and five eighths yards of fabric to make a dress. So we need to write all the names that apply to this mixed number, two and five eighths. Well, two and five eighths has a fraction, so it is a rational number, and rational numbers are real numbers. So we get that two and five eighths is a rational number and a real number. We're finished with the first part of the lesson. We got two more to go. The second part is understanding sets and subsets of real numbers. So maybe you can make your own little drawing like this to help you remember and put it in your notes that real numbers include irrational numbers and rational numbers, and rational numbers include integers, whole numbers, natural numbers. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope you join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.